Now you saw when we actually printed out those receipts, we got all this stuff in here because deploying a contract is actually just sending a transaction as we've said before. So if we wanna see what's really going on under the hood, we can actually create a transaction ourselves and create a contract ourselves just by specifying the transaction information. So how will we do that? Let's deploy this contract again, but only purely using transaction data. So we'll do a console.log. Let's deploy with only transaction data. And this is going to be the way you can actually deploy or send transactions purely with transaction data. You can send any transaction. This gives you unlimited flexibility with the transactions you want to send. What we can do is we can say const or let TX, which is going to stand for our transaction equals, and we can just add all of our transaction information in here. So the first thing that we're going to need is our nuts or the number that we only use once we go back to our transaction count. We're on four transactions here. So we'll use the nuns five because that's going to be a nuns that we haven't used before. Every time you send a transaction, it comes with one of those nunces, right? So the nunce is a bit of a over overused term. We saw it back in our blockchain basics that we use the nunce to, to solve that hard problem. Nunces are also used in wallets and in signers to send transactions and they use a different nunce for every transaction. So nunce, when we're talking about wallets, talks about a number associated with a unique transaction. Nunce, when we're talking about blockchain mining, is a value used to solve that hard problem. They both mean the same thing. They both mean a number only used once, but they're different in these different contexts. So we're going to use this number only used once, this unique number for our transaction, to send this. So we're going to say nunce is going to be five. We're going to pick a gas price of, of this right here. We're just going to use the gas price of ganache like that. We're going to pick a gas limit of some big number. We'll use one, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll just use that. We're going to say two is going to be null, right? Exactly like what we saw in our receipts and responses down here. Since we're creating a contract value is going to be zero. Since we're creating a contract, we don't want to send any ETH or Polygon or Avalanche. And then data is going to be that massive binary object in our binary bit. So in the binary section, we're going to copy this massive binary piece and we're going to put some quotes in here. We're going to do zero X and paste that in here. So this massive, massive data piece is the binary that we're sending. Whenever you send a transaction, you have this, this data object that you can fill with stuff. We're filling our data object with the binary, with the code that tells Ethereum, that tells our blockchain to deploy our smart contract that's going to look exactly like this. And then finally, we want to add the chain ID. As we've seen before with MetaMask, if we go back over to our networks, each one of these EVM chains has a different chain ID. Ethereum mainnet is one, Propstin is three, RinkB is four, Coven is 42, etc. And other EVM chains like Avalanche, like Polygon, are going to have their unique chain IDs as well. For Ganache, we can see the network ID up here is 1337. And some people, so we can just paste that in here. Some people have run into some issues where the chain ID and the network ID are different. And the chain ID is actually 31337. So if you have a problem with this, try 31337 instead. But it should be 1337. Now this is a transaction with all this information propagated, which is awesome. However, this transaction isn't signed. So nobody's sending this transaction right now. This is just the transaction details of what somebody wants to do. We actually need to sign this transaction and then send it to our blockchain. Const sign TX response equals await wallet dot sign transaction. And we can pass that TX object and then we'll do a console dot log of the sign TX response. In JavaScript, same as Solidity, if you type two backslashes before some code, it won't run that code. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out these three lines above. And the way that I'm doing it is by highlighting the sections and hitting command backslash, or you might hit control backslash, but this is a keyboard shortcut you can use to quickly comment out entire sections. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you what happens when we just run sign TX response wallet dot sign transaction back in our ganache. We see that we have four blocks in here. So let me ask, 
if we do this sign transaction and we get this sign transaction response, will we propagate another block? Well, let's find out. We'll run node deploy.js. We get this massive thing here. But if we go back to Ganache, we refresh, we actually don't see another transaction sent. That's because we're only signing a transaction here. We're not actually sending it. So this signed transaction response, this big number here represents a signed transaction, but not a sent transaction, which is different. We can actually send one of these transactions by changing this line a little bit. So instead of signed TX response, we'll change this to sent TX response equals await wallet dot send transaction TX. Then once we send the transaction here, we can do await send transaction response dot wait one. And we're going to wait one block confirmation to make sure this transaction actually goes through. Then we can run node deploy.js. And it looks like it's done, but if we actually scroll up, we actually got an error here. So there's this huge, massive thing here. And if we scroll up, we'll eventually see TX reject error. The TX doesn't have the correct nuts, which just for some practice, let's go ahead, type this into Google and see what we get. We actually get a web three JS from four years ago. I'm trying to call leaf picked, blah, 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 blah. It looks like this is a MetaMask issue that they ran into. And they said you have to reset your account in MetaMask, which we could do, but mm, let's make this a little bit more specific. Let's say ethers JS. It looks like we don't get, it looks like as of right now from this recording, we don't get a stack exchange ETH or a stack overflow question for this. It's probably because this is pretty straightforward. We don't have the correct nuns for our transaction, but this would be a good time to actually make this a question on stack overflow or stack exchange Ethereum so that it shows up first. So we actually don't get the correct nuns. We're going to want to make this a nuns of four. You can see here account has a nuns of four. TX has a nuns of five. So we actually would want this to be four. Now, an easier way to always get the correct nonce here is going to be actually just calling the transaction count from the wallet. So back in the ethers documentation, there's actually some good samples here on how to signing a message and then how to actually send these messages. So we can do await wallet dot get transaction count to get the nonce. So back in our code, we could do const nonce equals await. Oops, I copy pasted it. Await wallet dot get transaction count. And then we can just place the nonce right here. Now, let's try running this again. And it looks like this one did indeed go through. We can verify on Ganache here. We do indeed see we're currently on block five now, and we have one extra transaction. Now, we could go ahead and just run this again, and we'll never have to worry about actually updating this nonce ourselves, since we're just calling wallet.getTransactionCount to keep updating it. Current block is six, and our additional transaction has indeed gone through. Awesome. I showed you how to actually sign the transaction, but we didn't sign the transaction for our send transaction. Well, why not? If you command click or control click, or you go to the documentation for ethers, we can see the code for send transaction. So first it does some check provider stuff, does some stuff to populate the transaction, but we can actually see that before it sends the transaction, even in ethers, it signs the transaction first and then calls this.provider.send transaction. So if you just call send transaction with the transaction details like we did here, it's the same as signing it first and then sending it with the provider. Okay, great. So we've learned how to send a transaction using pure JavaScript and using pure ethers. One of the main takeaways from this is that every time we change the blockchain, every time we change state, every time we use gas, we're sending a transaction that looks pretty much exactly like this. The data in it is going to be the differentiator. The data for us here was data saying to create a new contract. When we make transactions like adding people or storing, the data that we're going to be passing in our transactions is going to be data associated with calling these functions. And when we actually call functions in ethers or in hardhat, we're not going to do this kind of raw const tx and list out all this stuff like here and list out the raw data, right? Because that's really, really hard. Ethers and hardhat are going to make this process a lot easier. So for now, Let's go ahead, comment out this whole section, which again, if we copy this whole thing and then hit command slash or control slash or whatever the shortcut is on your environment, that'll actually comment this out. Let's go ahead and uncomment this section so that we deploy our contract using kind of the ethers much easier to read way than this weird TX stuff. So cool. So we've changed our script back 
to deploying our contract like this. 